Mulder and Scully investigate a mysterious disappearance. They found bones in the river. They uncover a small town's terrifying secret. Do you think these people were eaten? Where murder is just the beginning. No! Funny, funny boy. Just straight into it. Let's go. <laughs> straight to it. Yeah. This episode was directed. By <laughs> this is episode fifty-two of Most Unwanted and Exiled podcast. This is our episode on our town, which we'll get into later because we want to bore you with our lives, basically. Our, not our town, our, our lives. lives. Yeah. Exactly. So, checks. What have you been up to this week? Not a lot, Luke. Not, not a lot. lot. Not no. A lot. Um, <laughs> what, what have I been up to? Um, I, well, I mean. Let's talk about what we're going to be up to, going mm. to be getting up to. This weekend's quite big. Yeah, um, yeah. a lot of football related stuff. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I've, I've just recently been to a football match as well. Yeah, he yeah. went to. Um, yeah. I mean, it was last week technically. Wolverhampton versus Man United. Yeah, yeah, we played. I, them again. I feel like because I know, especially for our American listeners, talking about uh, soccer mm. isn't the most exciting thing, <laughs> but. It's a big part of both our lives, I'd say. Um, so, you know. It's, it's, it's thrilling when you actually go. Well, the thing is, it's only for the next six weeks because then the season's over. <laughs> yeah. So you've only got to put up with it for yeah. a little bit longer. International competitions. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, we, we recently went to that. Um, uh, and yeah, it was good. It, we went down in the first half, like 20 minutes, and then won. So you got that. That defeat of thinking, oh no, we, that's it. This is going to be, this is going to be a bad game. And then, yeah. One in the end, so yeah, it was, it was good. Man, man, you of all teams. So I well, think me and you are going to be going to be watching the semi final, yeah, the FA Cup semi final, which Wolves are um, playing in, which yeah. is incredible. Mm. Um, First time since nineteen ninety eight. It's insane, like the run they're having at the moment, mm. and that's going to be a big day because um, I, I mean, as the listeners of the show might be aware, and. I, I, I don't know whether I call myself a wrestling fan anymore. Mm. Like, I don't watch it at all. Yeah. But it's WrestleMania. Yeah. And I, I, I will say this there's nothing more fun than having a few drinks at the pub and watching it with a load of wrestling fans because oh, yeah, you just throw everything aside. Whatever you, whatever you think still doesn't, it's still really enjoyable to scream at a TV as someone's getting thrown through a table. Yeah. That's never not going to be fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always just a good laugh. The, I plan on eating so many chicken wings. It's mm-hmm. unbelievable. The, the, the weird thing with uh, British WWE fans as well is that we, we pretty much torture ourselves to watch it because it, it's on at like, what, seven? In, starts at like seven in the afternoon in mm-hmm. America, doesn't it? Or at the night, should I say, and then runs till one ever. For us, that's about 12 o'clock at night, yeah. if not one. And it'll be easily going past five o'clock. So we're going to be... Bear in mind, we're going to be watching the FA Cup game at four in the afternoon. Well, let me run. Let me let me just to stop you right there. Let yeah. me run you through my schedule. Okay. So on Sunday, the day I, of rest, the day of rest, <laughs> as God intended, yeah. I am going to be getting up. I'm going to try and sleep in, so I'm going to get up around about half ten. Get ready, and I've got by twelve o'clock. We need to be out of the house, and I'm going to go to um, Jem's sister's birthday. I'm going to have a nice meal for a birthday. Then I'm going to get home, get ready, back out and up to town for around about three, half three. Hopefully get into a pub by about four to watch the match. That'll take us to about six o'clock. Mm-hmm. Then me and you probably going to go get something to eat. Mm-hmm. Take us to around about seven, half seven. Back to another pub where we're going to do a wrestling quiz. Yeah. Right up until about 10 o'clock when the pre-show starts. That'll take us to 12 o'clock. And we're expecting it to end about 6am the next day. Why are we doing this? I have no idea. The only thing that'll get us through this is lots of beer and lots of wings. Which is what I'm intending to having. I can't wait. It's going to be such a it's, fun it's day. It's going to be good. But, I mean, do you know what else keeps me going as well? Go on. Um, just community. Community gets me... It keeps me together. Yeah. Maureen. And there's no greater community... Than a community, the wrestling community, yeah. Than a community <laughs> of cannibals. So let's get into <laughs> our town. So 
So this episode, as we mentioned, was called uh, Our Town and is the 24th of 25 episodes of this series. So Season finale next I know, week. I know, yeah. I'm right looking, at the end. really looking forward to that. Yeah, but we have to get through this first. <laughs> um, it was directed by Rob Bowman, written by Frank Spotsnitz. Uh, original air date was May the 12th, 1995. Mm. So we'll get straight into it. Um, we start off on the County Road in Dudley, Arkansas. Dudley? Yeah, this, this, as soon as I saw this, I did like the, the comedic rub of my eyes <laughs> stare at the screen. But Dudley. But for um, people who um, don't know sort of the Midlands and the UK, Dudley is about a mile away. Mm. It's where you or used to live. Or a kilometre away. Yeah. <laughs> it's where you used to live, wasn't it? Basically near Dudley. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, to be fair, I don't live too far away from it now. Exactly, so. Yeah. yeah. Small world. It is small world. But to be fair, not really, because mm. most of the names in America are taken from English I'm towns. Saying, there's, right. there's a Birmingham, Alabama. Well, it's, 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 it's because they was colonised by people who were from... England, England so primarily, yeah. so the only ones that are diff well, the, the the only ones that are sort of different are ones that are based off like native sort of places or ones that are called like Jamestown and stuff like that. Where it's just yeah, person, yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess. Who discovered them? Yeah, and then you've got like, is it Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico's a state, isn't it? I think it's a country. I don't think it's a state. I want to say it's a state. I'm not sure. Yeah, this is where our geography tests. Yeah, and that's going to get obviously the Spanish. Well, Spanish. The, I think the Spanish took. I mean, yeah. Let's just talk about American history, shall we? <laughs> so, Sp- the Spanish primarily colonized the southern parts. Yeah, uh, you'd imagine. Yeah, the French primarily the northern, the northern part, and then the English sort of the middle part. Yeah. Um, Didn't the Dutch? Dutch. Didn't the Dutch sort of have part of it as well? Didn't like, they have like Manhattan and stuff like that initially? I don't know, because like you have a strong sort of Irish mm. um, part in Ireland, don't? And in, in, obviously in Ireland, in, in New <laughs> yeah, York, it's a lot of Irish people in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have a strong sort of Irish connection in in in, yeah. in in New York, and then you have the Italian connection in New York as I well. Think, I think that's that but that's was, like later, that much later. Say, I on, think that obviously. was sort of when they were trying to make a big push for more people to come there and start yeah, like, of building course, the country, yeah. I guess. So yeah. I'd have loved to have been there during like um the discovery of America, you know. America blows my mind because it how, how like it's um, insane how quickly it's become the world superpower. That and just how like in the last few years it's become America for for America for real Americans and it's like when it's basically yeah. Yeah, it's like the, the real Americans you've killed all it's completely made by immigrants like yeah, the whole yeah. thing yeah, yeah it, it, it is I don't know it, it is quite funny I, it, I, it sounds really bad I'm not disparaging like Americans no by no the way. but it's just an interesting yeah. Yeah. thing in history like mm. but it's such a, a short time span like especially like in Europe and we look at obviously in school we learn about like European history and whatnot, and I mean it goes back hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years um, like you look at Egypt, look at Rome. Do you know what I mean? It's it's even Britain. Like it start, yeah, exactly. started off as Druids, and, and you can't, and you, and you almost can't get your head around it because it's just it's like a completely different world. Mm. Whereas America, it's like it's a couple of hundred years. Yeah, and that's it. And it's so it's so crazy well, to me. It's a couple of hundred years for well the, for, for the America that we know, but yeah. unfortunately, we don't know much about the America before. You know mm. what I mean? Very interesting yeah. stuff. That imagine just. Saying, yeah, I'm just going to go and create this city. Yeah. Uh, it's so insane how quickly it'll off. happen. I've, I've had enough of, of England. I'm going across the sea and just going to hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm quite... Uh, this is really off topic, but I'm quite... Um, I like uh, like the whole sort of pirate, the Pirates of the Caribbean stories and mm. whatnot. I don't know why, they just fascinate me. And... Um, not like the Disney film type thing. I'm talking about the like, actual pirates. The ride is pretty good, to be fair. <laughs> the ride is fantastic. <laughs> but just in general, like the, the actual sort of um, stories about pirates. And I just think it would have been fascinating to have been a part of that. I'd have liked to have been a pirate. I reckon you'd have got shot and killed yeah. fairly early on. We've had this discussion before. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I'd be a badass. And you're like... Nah, no, I wouldn't be. I'd have been, a, I'd have been like... I'd have probably been like... If I was... Surviving on a ship, I'd have probably been like a cleaner. You'd swab the deck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you'd like to think of yourself as Captain Jack Sparrow, but you're more like the <laughs> anonymous extra number three. <laughs> Sorry. So would I. So would I. Yeah. I. I always think of like um, 
I think we had this discussion a while back, quite early on, where we were still doing the questions or the the, the things at the end of the yeah, show. yeah, um, and how like what time period you'd want to go to, and it's like oh, I wouldn't mind seeing the like, Roman times, and it's like. I think we forget how unbelievably brutal life yeah. was like, like even yeah. like 200 years ago. Yeah, definitely. Um, where like, I think like the the murder rate was like 10 times higher than it is now. <laughs> I, mean, but, I mean, you're saying that. Did you hear about the, um, I, I, honestly, my lack of research is astounding, but a Middle East country um, bringing back stone Br- to death. Brunei, yeah. yeah. Brunei. Yeah. Can you believe that? Today's day and age. I know. They own hotels across the world. They like the 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 people who run. I, I honestly I don't know what, mm. what I'm talking about, but it's I crazy, cannot believe yeah. it. And they've got like active gay communities in that country. Like it's not like it's um, already frowned upon, mm. and it is frowned upon. But like people are gay or, or lesbian or bi or whatever um, out there, yeah. and they and they just can't believe it because yeah. they just their lives have been torn apart. Because yeah. it's like. I'm gonna ha- if I carry on living the way I, I want to live, I'm going to be absolutely slaughtered in the most bu- brutal, brutal way, brutal barbaric way possible. I can't believe it. I know, I know. You, you, it uh, yeah. just begs belief, doesn't it? That sometimes you take two steps forward and then end yeah. up a, a one step back. And honestly, then, yeah, really the, this really derailed it. I apologise. Continue, Luke. Uh, all came from Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we'll start with the episode. Yeah, let's do it. So, we're in a forest at night in Dudley, Arkansas, uh, and there's a car that pulls up into this deserted area. We see George Kearns, who's this four-year-old guy, uh, is with uh, a a 20-year-old woman called Paula Gray, as we find out later, Um, and they both look quite nervous, Mm. Um, and they pull over, and you think, oh, is this some kind of like romantic scene? Um, We see quite early on that it definitely is yeah um they say that they're scared of people seeing them um of the creepiest line ever yeah straight off the bat and the guy turns around i mean the guy's a considerable amount older than this yeah, girl yeah. and he turns around and says what are you scared of you're not in high school anymore Ugh. i didn't even pick up on that it's so that is creepy quite, that is quite creepy yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway uh she gets out the car um and sort of runs off into the distance and George starts like convulsing basically he yeah like, yeah his, instantly like, um, he takes a tablet um, and then he runs off into the woods and sort of chases after her um, playfully playfully yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Not like, he's not like <laughs> sprinting <laughs> <laughs> context is everything in this, uh, in this scene um, and he sort of gets lost uh, doesn't find his way and he falls down in the woods and we see all of these like lanterns, these lights appear around him. Um, reminding me of that bit from Lost where they all light yeah, up yeah, with, yeah. The, with the others. But yeah, we see all these lights around him. And then we see a man in a wooden mask appear from behind and we see an axe lift and then swing down. Yeah. Fade to black. What did you think of this opening? Good start to the, good start to the episode. Yeah. I felt like maybe we were going to get like Almost like a slasher episode. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, like the, a classic horror. Yeah, yeah, even like that sort of camera angle of like looking down up up at the villain mm. as he brings the axe down. It was yeah, very yeah, slasher like. Um, yeah, so interesting. I didn't know what the convulsing was about in the yeah, car, but yeah. we'll I mean, find out. Yeah, it may, makes sense later on. But yeah, I thought he had like a heart problem or something like that. But well, it was it was the timing of it, wasn't it? Because as soon as the door closed, it was like, Ugh! Yeah, yeah, and like it just felt a bit weird. But yeah, we will find out why. So after the opening credits, um, we're at the FBI headquarters in Washington, um, and we see Mulder looking at a file for uh, George Kearns, um, and Scully m- mentions that this they're being sent on a goose chase, to which Mulder says, oh, it's a chicken chase. Classic. Classic Mulder. What a great joke. Um, he says that uh, George Kearns is a poultry inspector for Chaco Chickens, um, and he explains that... Um, there was a woman also driving. Uh, they're talking about this murder, basically. Yeah. And there was a woman driving on the highway at the same time who said she saw a fireball, basically, mm. on the, at the same time. Um, and Scully thinks that maybe you should just call Oprah. I'm guessing Oprah at the time was doing these sort of... I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I don't know what that was about. I think it might have just basically been saying she was just after attention. Yeah. More I, than anything else. I think, yeah. It, it's a... I mean, well, Oprah's still going there. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Isn't she a ch- is she a chat show host? 
Yeah, I guess so. That's yeah, quite impressive, she's doing a new thing now, isn't she? With, with Apple. With Apple, yeah, oh, yeah. Hello. it's a new show on their like new service, or I don't know what it's going to be. Wasn't there some controversy with Oprah? Or am I thinking of somebody else? Uh, I, I feel know. like there's like she's gone down in everyone's estimation. Everyone's recently. got a controversy these days, don't yeah, they? they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, you have to be really careful about everything you do. Yeah, every step you take. Every move you make. They are watching you. <laughs> We've got way too musical in the last two episodes. Um, uh, Mulder claims that ancient Ozarks claimed um, that the fireballs were spirits of ancient Native Americans. Mm. And I thought this this is what path we were going down. We're getting this like native story, I guess. Well, it's similar to the last episode, isn't it? Where mm. the first 10, 15 minutes, they throw so many theories at you. And none of them go anywhere. Mm. And again, it was just frustrating a little bit because I just, I kind of just want to enjoy the narrative of a plot mm. and see it through. And there's so many different things. Like, I, 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 I'm going to jump ahead a little bit just to sort of go through the th- theories. But like, they, they, they go through how um, they age differently and they don't really go on to explain that mm. apart from the fact that yes they don't age that well I think that the implication is that they don't age because they eat human meat yeah uh, but there's that there's better, this f- better give it a go <laughs> <laughs> well there's this there's this fireball theory there's this theory about like eating the chickens or the ri- I don't really know like there's so many different things I mean mm-hmm. I think it's just simple a cannibal story basically yeah I thought half of this episode. I thought it was going to be like an incest story. Oh right! Like oh, with the with well, the daughter. Uh, they kept on saying about this disease and how it was. They mentioned and it was very specific how it can, it's genetic, but it mm. can't be spread any other way. Mm. And then they go to the guy and I'm really jumping ahead, so I apologise. But they go to what's his name, Mister Chaco, the Chaco. Yeah, they go to him and he mentions that he started all this with his family. It was a family business, and then he's created this village from nothing. And I thought, hang about. Are they all sister and brother, like, once removed, uh, the mm. entire village, and that's why they've all got this disease? I thought that's where they were going with it. No, they wasn't. No. <laughs> um, we'll get get on track anyway. Yeah, and we'll, sorry we'll pick that. up those threads as we go through. Um, or not. One, you know, oh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, we see these pictures of these burn marks in a field um, where, again, this, this sort of fireball theory... Looks plausible. Yeah, we find out later that that's as or as Scully says, rightly so. Could have just been a bonfire. Yeah, <laughs> hit the nail on the head. Um, or it could have been a vortex shadow. Oh, <laughs> I like the way they don't even consider that theory, considering they've just been on that case. That's one thing about X Files that does bug me is um, Scully can be incredibly dismissive of things. We like. That'd never happen. It's like, hang on a second. You literally, the last case that you did was about a dark matter black hole. Don't start saying, yeah. well, it couldn't be a, it couldn't be a spirit. Well, well, you've already dealt with ghosts. <laughs> so many times these have happened. It's like, at this point, you can't, you can't be so dismissive. Yeah, but, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. It, it's just one of those things. I think they have to do it to keep the series yeah. going. So it's just one of those tropes that you just sort of have to deal with, yeah, basically. Definitely. Um, Mulder shows uh, Scully this footage of a documentary that he had um, that he said that he saw as a kid and it gave him nightmares. And it's uh, we see this guy ranting about being taken by fire demons. Um, he says he was Creighton Jones and he was picked up in 1961. Um, pretty good footage for 1961. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, he went missing for three days and then turned up and he was deranged and uh, they said this was near Chaco Chicken um, again that doesn't really go anywhere no. like this guy does yeah, I, and I forgot about him to be yeah, honest yeah, until exactly. this moment it's really so much. strange like yeah. they, don't, they just don't really I don't know yeah Um. but anyway we are uh, we're now in Dudley Arkansas and Mulder and Scully are investigating this burn mark in the field Um. They notice these like strange sticks in the in this field, and um, Mordus explains that this is a a witch's peg, uh, and apparently it's used to ward off evil spirits. Um, Sheriff Aaron's turns up, um, and he asks if he can if he can help basically with the investigation. Um, he says that they found no evidence um, of of where this of where George has gone, so they just filed a missing persons report. Um, they ask if um, these witches' pegs are suspicious, and he basically says that they're all over the field. There's nothing suspicious. Yeah, about them. it's just a 
the the local community's suspicious and not, yeah. not suspicious, superstitious. Yeah, like. basically. Um, have you, ever, you you never watched the American Office, have you? <laughs> it's just a, a weird joke that I always think of whenever I say that word. Um, because my Michael Scott, mm. who's like um, Steve Carell's Steve, character, yeah, yeah. and he um, he's trying to explain to the camera why he, I can't even remember the context, but he's trying to explain to the camera um, why he's doing something, and he doesn't want to seem like he's being stupid. Mm. So he turns around, and he says, "I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious." <laughs> <laughs> It's just a great joke, and every time I think of the, the word, it always reminds me of it. Superstitious, just dishes. <laughs> um, anyway, um, the sheriff mentions that that burn was just a trash burning, basically, um, and he says that they, he says he hands out citations for them, but it's cheaper to pay the fine than yeah. Like the way he described it, I would definitely just burn it. Yeah, because yeah. like rather than take it all the way where sort of skip or mm. wherever you would take it. Just burn it, simple. Yeah. But you're going to pay the fine for it. Not a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. You're a you, fly tipper. You can, sh- <laughs> you can shake your head at me all I want, but until they make it easier for me, I'm going to do what I need to do. <laughs> Dump your fridge in there. In the <laughs> <canal. laughs> um, yeah, uh, but you know what? Saying that, you'll find that, because you'll, you'll be moving house soon, Yeah. Um, and you'll find this yourself where... Like you, you think to yourself, I'll never be a fly tipper. Yeah. I'll never just throw my sofa onto a random street. But you get close, Luke. You get close when you can't. You have to pay three hundred quid to move a sofa anywhere because they, no one will take it anywhere, and you can't find anywhere to take it. The council don't do it for you. Not without a charge. I'll tell you that right now, Luke. You said unbelievably old. <laughs> Honestly, it's they don't make it easy. It's been the, in six months, so I'll be doing it. Bloody won't take my sofa. <laughs> Honestly, I tell you, the, the the trouble you go through with stuff like that, and you understand why people do it, because it's so much easier. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Hefty penalties, if you call though. Hefty. 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 Um, Mulder asks about these Foxfire myths and rumours. And uh, the sheriff just says that that's swamp gas. Uh, it's just a ghost story, basically, around that. Um, and he also says that George didn't fit in with the community um, and implies that he cheated on his wife. Yeah. Um, and everyone knew about it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not really his place to talk about this, is it? <laughs> bit, of, bit of gossip from the, <laughs> from the sheriff there. Um, I know where I go for my gossip. The local sheriff. <laughs> straight, straight to the police. Um, and he just thinks that he's probably just left town with another woman. Um, again... Really shoddy detective police yeah. work. This is a few times on the trot now where they've sort of just phoned in their job. And it's like... But then again, I always think about this. And like, um, it was whilst watching that Twilight Zone episode and we see that there's the guy who's like, oh, I was a pilot. and Yeah, like, yeah. I bet there are people... Like, everybody's had a day at work where you've just phoned in what you're doing. You know, like, yeah, like, yeah, of course. You're just like... Not in my current job, obviously. Obviously I'll not, never no. do that. Um, but like... In other roles. You've seen people do it. Yeah. Other like, than yourself. So people do it, yeah. Say if you're working at a petrol station, sometimes your customer care is not 100% there. All no, the time. because you go into like auto auto mode, yeah, like exactly. autopilot. Does that happen with people who are like, I don't know, a surgeon? Maybe if you just turned up as a surgeon one day and was just like, I just can't be bothered. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Is, mm. But then again, do, do, I mean, I suppose it's human, isn't it? Yeah, to sort of, I don't know, like have an off day. You're in. Everyone has an off day, whether it's intentional or not. But you always trust people, don't you? Like you trust a pilot that he's mm. he's definitely going to fly. But then again, I suppose his life's in, on the line as well. He can't slack off, or he's going to kill himself at the same time. Yeah, I know. I know. We. It's interesting, actually. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, let's take the surgeon example. Like. Wouldn't I, I suppose the importance of the task would take over? I, I suppose there's not many. The problem is there's not that many jobs in the world that are that important mm. to figure out. Like nothing I've ever done in my work is as important as any surgery. So yeah. I can't. I, I can't figure out whether you would be allowed an off day. What Maybe like, it would just be like when you're cleaning up or something like that. Do you know what I mean? The comparison I always make is like obviously I work in IT support, so it's fixing stuff. We call them cases. But they're like tickets for problems, yeah. I guess, and you have to try and figure out the problem and then solve it. It's like a surgeon of 
the mechanical world, basically. <laughs> well, I was going to compare it to police work, detective work. Obviously, it's not as high pressure or not oh, as yeah, important. Oh, yeah, here we go. He's at it again, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. CID Luke over there. <laughs> I've solved the problem of the ram. <laughs> <laughs> he takes his own magnifying glass with him to work every day. <laughs> so, yeah. But do you know what I mean? Like, There's some days where I'll look at a case and go, that's not that important. I'll leave that to what, yeah. whatever. You assume police are always trying to crack a case, you know what I mean? Yeah. But what if the case isn't you, that important? You assume that they're giving it 100%. Yeah. And of course, they're very, by their very human nature, Yeah. there's going to be days when there's not. And to be fair, police and um, like firefight, fire, I don't know. I feel like the pressure in the situ- of the situation would get you up, up for it in that situation. Mm-hmm. So like... For an hour of the day, you could be on on your on on form. Even if you're having the worst day ever, you'd be on form for that hour. And then when you're cleaning up your tools afterwards and you're doing the paperwork, that's when you just sort of like zoned out autopilot. If, if we ha- have any listeners who are in high pressure jobs, yes, great. I know. Have you ever phoned in? A, we've got a few a lawyers. Yeah, and I definitely. Oh, I, I, I can't, I can't remember who it was. It might might have been. Oh, we probably I, shouldn't say it just in case. No, I think she's mentioned it in the oh, okay. show. Like she's she's emailed in about it. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure, but I know I've seen her definitely a few lawyers. If, um, so, yeah, if you're a lawyer, have you ever had a case where you just thought, I cannot be bothered with this case? And you well, sort No, they're not, not going to say that, are they? Don't, you don't have to specifically say, and we'll keep you anonymous. We won't say, we, this is for our benefit. We just want to know. <laughs> this is not going to work. No one's going <laughs> to... Someone's going to email it and say, I am terrible at my job. We're grouchy just straight up. <laughs> yeah, we're going straight to the top. <laughs> um, I'm just really interested. Like, I'd like to know. I, I've always wondered this. Like, Does anybody else phone in their job? Phone, I don't know whether phone in is like a universal term, but basically yeah. like, just, you, you just say, you know what, today I'm just going to get by. I'm not going to go above and beyond. Yeah. I'm just, just going to just... Do what I need to do and get out of it. Because every 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 office I've ever worked in has had that Friday atmosphere, like on a on a Friday where people are just sort of doing just what Ready they to need go. to yeah. because it's the weekend. Does that happen if you're yeah, like I said, a, a doctor or you know? Okay, we've gone way too long on this, but there's yeah. one last point I'd like to make. Do you get to be a doctor? Without having that's, that commitment. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe that whole process wheedles out people that are like that. That's that's my thought. You probably so, need to have drive to get to that position. Like, yeah. to be a lawyer, it's like nine, I think it's like eight, nine years yeah. study. Yeah. So maybe that whole process wheedles out all the people that phone in their job. And the people that have left that actually make it are the people that have got that self-drive and self-motivation that they don't need that. Mm. And I'm sure every one of our listeners are going to be like that. Yeah, and they're definitely not going to tell us that they phone in half their clients. <laughs> I, I'm just very interested, basically. Yeah, I just think people are more alike than we assume. That we we assume that people are always better than us. Yeah, I feel and that's like the Instagram model is. Yeah, it? you always feel like everyone has life better I, than yours. I feel like more people are like you than you believe. You know what I mean? Yeah, interesting. But anyway. But this this cop is definitely phoning it in. He is definitely phoning it in. Man, we really need to get back on track. Um, so yeah, he believes that uh, this guy's just left town with another woman. Um, so they um, go to speak to his his uh, his wife. Um, uh, they go to the Kearns' household and they speak to Doris Kearns. Uh, and Doris believes the same thing that. He's left her for someone else. She even says that um, he was done with her when she turned 40, which is kind of sad, really. Very blase yeah. about it all. Yeah, about. yeah. Um, Mulder brings up um, that he was about to file an inspection report um, that would have basically closed the Chaco plant. Um, uh, it was all written, ready to go, but he didn't file it right mm-hmm. before he went missing. And his wife said that she had no idea, they didn't really talk about work. Um and he asks ask her to get in touch if if she needs to get in contact yeah. with them about anything. Um, we then go to the Chaco Chicken Processing Plant, and we see this billboard before we go in that just says "Good people, good food." Yeah. Um, I wonder if that's a little Ooh, hint. Good people, yeah, that's good food equals good food. Yeah, that seems very on the nose. Now, yeah, like. it does. I've never. I didn't even notice no, that myself. That's great. I only just picked up on that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, Mulder and Scully arrive there, and we see uh, Paula um, from the earlier scene is in her locker, um, getting ready. 
And she sort of looks ill. She takes tablets. Um, and for someone for someone that's acting so paranoid, yeah. she is like doing everything in her power to get as much attention on her as possible. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. she is acting so suspicious. Yeah, it is. No, sorry, I'm thinking the wrong word. I was going to say you're thinking superstitious. <laughs> no, you, you can't say no. little suspicious. That, that's not that's not even a word. That no. doesn't make sense. Do you know what? It's just my brain just <laughs> struggling today. Sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway uh, Paula carries on to work and we see her processing these chickens basically on this conveyor belt um, Mulder and Scully turn up and they uh, bring up this report to the manager of the facility Jess Harold um, and he says um, that he's always been trying to shut them down basically yeah which is not really any news to him is it yeah he's just a, been a thorn in his side since he turned up basically um, and he says he'll show them something and we see um, Paula then start gasping uh, as it cuts back to her. And we see these chickens passing. And then we see George's head on a spike. Mm. Um, <laughs> she picks it up and throws it to the ground. Uh, to which we then see it's just a chicken. Yeah, so yeah. So she's hallucinating. Um, we then come back to uh, Jess and Mulder and Scully. And he says that they've had... Um, he said they've had no issues. Uh, they had no issues at the plant until George showed up, basically. Um, he says that the other inspectors said that the plant's fine. And Mulder says that uh, he was filing a report saying that um, they had something called line hypnosis, which is basically caused by repetitive activity. Yeah, um, yeah. Which you can imagine from this process. Yeah, some plant. days you just throw your job in. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. It's that. As, a, as a chicken processor... That's the thing. You eat food that you assume is fine, but you yeah. But that job's not very gratifying. It's... I, you know, what I can say from experience. I used to work. I actually got a job uh, about six years ago as a, a graphic designer. Yeah. Um, and what I was actually doing was designing um, products, but it was cake toppers, yeah. so it would be printed onto like sort of edible paper or edible icing, mm-hmm. and it would be put onto um, cakes, and that was the whole job. I'd I'd, I'd design it. But occasionally, you would be asked to go into the manufacturing room and help out, especially if like, they was running behind on an order or something like that. Yeah. And it was stuff like you'd grab, you'd have a massive stack of icing and you'd have like this big mechanical press and you'd cut it out and you'd just do that for three hours. Mm. And it was very like much like factory line work. Not, not really what I was into, but you just sort of went with it. Yeah. And you'd put your headphones in and you would... You would do like an hour's work, and you look back and you go, "I don't even know whether I've done any of that right." Yeah, because you just you you You're have, all, but you yeah. just in your mind, you your mind goes elsewhere, and you just autopilot it. Yeah, yeah. And like for all I know, I don't know. I, I, you know what I mean? Like I assume I've got everything right, and of course, it ninety nine percent of the time it always is. But you can imagine like things yeah. slipping through. Yeah, definitely. Do you know where this got? I've just realised where this idea has come from. Uh, Sunday, we went to the Black Country Living Museum, which is a a museum near us, which is basically like these old set up houses to look like the 1920s and yeah. earlier, basically um, Victorian style houses. It's where they filmed a lot of Peaky Blinders, actually. If you've ever watched, yeah, it's just down the road from us, yeah. isn't it? Um, but we went there and we did the canal tour, um, where you just go through the Dudley, the, the Dudley yeah. canals, um, and there's a part where it's um, the one of the original canal tunnels, and it's all bricked, uh, bricked mm. up. And they're sort of explaining about that. And they said that the uh, the bricks were largely built by the children of the people who used to work in the mines and the tunnels. Mm. And I just thought, all this is built by these bricks made by kids. And it's like, yeah, surely they're not 100% on. Because they were saying like some of them are as old as five. I can't imagine I had much yeah. attention span as a five-year-old. And uh, Victorians, I can't imagine it'd be much different, although they'd Unfortunately, probably get punished for being yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, so all of this is being held up by these bricks made by you kids. You start to question how think, safe it is. And... I, I was there going on with just a hard hat thinking, is this okay? Like, is this really, like, you, you assume that it's safe because this guy, an inspector... Yeah, I know talking. what you mean, yeah. I don't know, it's just, yeah. I don't, <laughs> you, there's a lot of... You realise there's a lot riding on other people's handiwork. It's yeah. Like, other people could just be just as liable <laughs> as me. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But you hope you go through yeah. life hoping that people are more sm- skilled yeah. for the task that they need to do. Basically, not yeah. always the case, though. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately. But anyway, I feel like yeah, we should stop talking about competency <laughs> in the workplaces. 
<laughs> yeah, we're not being very confident of this podcast right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we definitely get the same. People have, people have started this podcast and going, oh, I hope that these guys know what they're talking about, because yeah. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste two hours talking about something other than the X-Files. <laughs> We've let them down. Yeah, we've, let we, them we've down. phoned this podcast in. That's what's happened. We haven't. We've given, given good. Oh insight. yeah, we've actually done the opposite. We've gone way, way overboard, above and beyond, above and beyond, and analysing parts of this. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, Mulder starts inquiring about uh, something called the feed grinder, and uh, Jess basically says that this uh, grinds up any parts of the chicken they they can't use, and then basically they they feed it back to the chickens. Yeah. This is the first indication I had, I had to what might be the... Problem. I didn't pick up on this, to be fair. I, I, it just flew me by, but yeah, it is a very obvious reference I, now I, that I look at it. I remember age... It was not that long ago, actually, when there was the big Mad Cow, epi, uh, Mad Cow disease epidemic mm. in the UK. And I remember it was from basically cows eating cows, I guess. Oh, was it? that what it was? Yeah, yeah. And it, it passed down, basically. It's a similar thing. They mention it in this. It's like a prion disease, it's called. Yeah. And you can pick it up from... yeah. Eating similar flesh to yours. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, oh, that was that was where I sort of picked up on it. But anyway, um, we see all this gruel basically come out of this grinder, and um, Scully again still thinks that this is just a waste of time. They they're, they're being wasted on this case. Um, to which we then hear a scream, and we see that Paula has now grabbed Jess um, and is holding a knife to his throat. Um, Mulder and Scully try to talk her down. Um, but the sheriff, who competent shot, um, <laughs> shoots um, shoots Paula straight in the head, and she immediately just falls into this like gruel vat that we saw yeah. earlier. Great visual. Yeah, we see her just sink into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, we later see Paula's body now have been has been taken out of this vat, basically um, zipped up, and we see uh, a doctor Randolph um, is treating this cut on Jess's neck. Um, Mulder and Scully ask what could have caused this, uh, and Jess says he has no idea. Um, they ask Dr. Vance if he knows anything, but he just stays quiet about it all. Yeah, he's suspiciously he, quiet. Yeah, he phones his job in that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he basically turns around and says that he doesn't He doesn't really know. He's not qualified. He just yeah. deals with cuts on hands and stuff like that in the workplace. Basically. He's not really qualified to go into it. Um, but yeah, he do, He is very evasive with their mm. questions. Um when Jess leaves, um, Vance um, says that basically she was having headaches. Uh, and yeah, as you mentioned, yeah, he's, he said he's out of his depths with, depth yeah. with this kind of thing. But uh, the comparison between um, her and... I forget the other guy's name. What? Um, the initial... George. George, yeah. yeah. The, um, the comparison between them is there because yeah. they both have the similar type of headaches. Exactly, yeah. Um, and they mention uh, he mentions that he might be stress related um, to this this job this um, line hypnosis mm-hmm. that they mention, um, and he says um, they they asked to, to get an autopsy basically of of, of Paula, and um, he says that they need to get permission from Mister Chaco, who is Paula's grandfather. Mm. Um, so then we cut to the Chaco residence, and we see Mulder and Scully drive up to this huge like. Um, it's sort of a very southern looking kind of house, isn't it? Yeah. Um, they go to the door and a, a housekeeper basically leads them out to the, the garden. Um, and we see Chaco, who looks about 60 odd, um, feeding these chickens at the back. Um, again, Mulder in his shades, pull, yeah. pulling them off. Yeah, he's walked through the house on them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, no need to take them off. No, no, no. He knows he's going back outside. Just yeah, good point. Ride the wave. That's a good <laughs> um, Chaco says that feeding chickens clears his mind and he explains how useful chickens are about how you can use their feathers their meat their bones this that and the other um, he then uh, asks why they want to conduct an autopsy so they explain that they think these murders or the, these um, their symptoms might be linked um, and he starts explaining how Dudley used to just be a patch of dirt until he arrived. Um, and he says that men like George um, don't want to help build a town. They just want to tear it down. Yeah. He thinks they just wanted to take everything away from him. Uh, and he, he starts talking about... It's quite a poetic thing where he says about being old, about how um, when you're 
um, young, you build all these things up to give to to people uh, when you're you're older, and then when you get old, you just see everything taken away from you. Yeah, it's yeah. basically the gist. I didn't write down the exact quote, but yeah, it's quite quite a, an interesting sort of. Oh yeah, definitely monologue. I guess it's quite charismatic. Yeah, character, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Um, and he says that they could do the autopsy because he wants to know what's happened uh, to her. Um, so then we see Scully looking at. Uh, tissue under a microscope as Mulder enters and she says that this is a brain sample and it has evidence of something called uh, Kreutzfeld Jacobs disease which is a degenerative disorder and it says it leads to sponge like holes in the brain yeah Um, did he ever explain how this how multiple people are contracting this yeah it's how did he George has got into like the foods well George had this disease yeah and other people have eaten him because um, sort of like mad cow disease, because they're eating something that's genetically similar oh, to them. Oh, okay, and they've yeah. got they it from George. Through that. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, I get it. Um, she says that it's quite hard to diagnose, uh, and she explains that basically the behaviour that she's exhibiting exhibiting is quite common of what happens with the disease, and she also says that it's deadly. Yeah. Um, Within a th- th- two to three months, she said. Yeah, basically. Um, Mulder then says that he's found a file, but it seems to indicate that she was born in 1948, mm. um, which this makes her about, uh, I think at the time, what? In the 60s? Yeah. No, not in the 60s. It was She's... Nine, oh, no, I'm talking about... Right? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm, I, th- yeah. I think she was 50s, 40s, 50s, I mean, or mm. something like that. Yeah, yeah. But she, again, as we saw from the beginning, she looks about 20. Yeah. So... Um, and he says that this is going to be more interesting than Foxfires. Yeah. It's, um again, they, they, t- until they get to the answer, I just thought this is a little bit too hectic. Mm. A little bit all over the place because I just didn't know what what part, what train to follow. Do you know what I mean? What train yeah. of thought to follow. Yeah. Um, and the last couple of episodes have been a bit like that as well. Mm. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because they're trying to add a little bit of mystery to it. But I just think it could do without. I don't think I mm. need it. I think I'm more than happy just following a simple plot it's along. A straight, straightforward story. Yeah. Um, we see Mulder and Scully driving down um, a road. And um, Scully says that the the odds of two people, uh, two people in one town having this same disease um, are practically astronomical. Yeah. Um, just because it's so rare. Um, we then see a chicken van sort of head towards them and swerve. It swerves out of the way and crashes into this pool. Uh, they run over to help, and then we see these like chicken cages being submerged. And then we also see this like red stuff in the water. Initially, I thought it was like, oh, the chickens are I just know, burst <laughs> 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 on him. <laughs> and now I thought, like, I don't know, like the cage might have mangled and like, I don't yeah, know, like yeah. crushed the chicken or something. I thought it was that, but uh, we find out what this is a bit later on. What was this guy's problem? He had the same thing. Did he? Yeah, yeah. That's what they. I think I think I've missed half of the episode. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember any of this. I remember. So he was all over the road. Did they? Did they actually say he had the same thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. My next note: Scully says the driver has the same thing. Oh my god! I I wasn't paying attention, was I? <laughs> were you read? Were you like looking at your phone at the same? time? I was thing? at work watching it. <laughs> I watched him a lunch break. Talk, talking of competency at your no, job. No, no, no. <laughs> on my lunch break. I wouldn't get away with it at my <laughs> office. There's so many people around me. I know. Ugh. I say that like I know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, like, oh, 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 oh. Sneaking around on there, just like <laughs> hopping up behind the monitor. Um, so, yeah, we, we see this um, the, the crash scene later on. And, yeah, Scully says that the driver had the same thing. Um she thinks that um, she has a. She notes it as a dark theory that maybe George had been put into this feed grinder, and this disease uh, is prion based, so it could have passed down into the chickens. Uh, the chickens would have wouldn't have contracted it because the DNA doesn't match. Yeah, but anyone who ate the chickens would 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 contract it basically. But like Mulder says. That would have been on a more global scale, whereas yeah. this is refined to just a town. Just a town. They mention about the mad cow uh, disease epidemic in in England, um, and yeah, as you said, Mulder said this this would be an epidemic. Um, uh, he, he asked the sheriff what's up with the water and what this red stuff is on the top, and he basically says it's a runoff from the plants, like sort of their excess waste. And Mulder says that he wants to dredge the river. 
and the sheriff is sort of taken aback by this request and he's sort of really hesitant to mm. actually do it but eventually he relents and agrees to do it um Mulder thinks that they'll find George George's body in this runoff and in this river basically great hunch mm. this can't happen right what do you mean this river with like the blood and the runoffs of from the factory like surely that that's not a thing does that happen in real life I f- Feel like these days there'd be an environmental like sort of yeah like that that's a running water supply like Mm. they mentioned that it's not it's like a still lake so it's not running off anywhere so if it is an isolated where's it going then like like maybe like a sewage line or something like that I don't know yeah I guess I I know there is like stuff that does this that just pumps stuff out into sort of that's horrendous though isn't it I know I know like it's so easy for someone to just fall in. They've got, got all this blood gunk. on them. Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't yeah. doesn't seem right. It doesn't sit with me, Luke. See. You should join this environmental. I don't know. I don't care that much. <laughs> <laughs> I care, but I don't want to do any work. For it. <laughs> I mean, I'd join and I'd phone it in. <laughs> <laughs> Take bribes. Yeah, and, yeah. I, 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 corruption's I'm, so easy to fall into. Well, the thing is, corruption's very simple to do. And it's, it's no, no work on your behalf. In fact, a lot of the time, it's uh, trying not to do your job properly. Basically, so, yeah, yeah. Perfect, really. Perfect. The perfect job. I'd take bribes all the time. If I was like a politician, oh, I, I, yeah, I'd take bribes. <laughs> your morals would just be corrupt. Yeah, like yeah, I wouldn't care. I'd be like, yeah, yeah give, give me all the money. I'd be I'd be on a penthouse somewhere, and I'd be like, just, uh, yeah, it'd be the best. I'd have people like fanning me as I walked in. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll. You want to be Emperor Nero, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be fine. Fair dues. It'd be fun, wouldn't it? Be you only get one life, Luke. Come on. It'd be ended shortly, though. That's the problem. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. I'm, I'm keeping all the all the all the, the white people happy. Yeah, that's the thing, and it? it's always the baddies that come after you. If you do a good job, baddies come and kill you. If you work with the baddies, yeah. To be fair, in all seriousness, I always <laughs> thought to myself, like whenever you're watching like a crime film, I'm just like, there's no benefit to getting involved in anything like that because mm. you're always going to end up. You're either going to end up killed or arrested. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. there's no good side. Yeah. And, like, it always ends up where, like, you do something wrong. Mm. And, like, they're after you. And it's like, well, you've, it doesn't make a difference. You've done three years' good work. That's the thing. Even if you get away with it for a certain amount of time. Look at this. What's what's this guy? Uh, is it El Chapo? The the Mexican drug lord is here. You're going to have to he's, he's, educate he's, me. He's under a trial at the moment. They're, they've gone on trial for... Can't remember what it's for, but basically, they're um, they've got basically got him, and he stands a good chance of being uh, ar- arrested and sent down for well multiple life sentences. I mm. would imagine, and it's like, yeah, he's probably had a good life, I guess, a, a, a life where he's been able to do pretty much exactly what he wanted, yeah. drugs and killing his enemies and this, that, and the other. But now he's going to get arrested and have <laughs> the latter part of his life, yeah. In jail, where yeah. everyone's gonna want to kill him. Cell. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing, and everyone's gonna want to either kill him or he's. Then again, I suppose in prison, he's probably in the. Uh, it's no justice. It's no justice in the world. Why are we good? Yeah. <laughs> Heaven. <laughs> Imagine if like this is the turning point, and like there's no podcast next week because we. Just <laughs> we've got the crime point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you hear about some banks being robbed in uh, in Dudley, in the Dudley. West Midlands, yeah, then that might be us. No, no, it, no, it definitely wasn't us, Luke. Yeah. You're not getting the point. You're not set up for this criminal life. <laughs> also, it was us. <laughs> bank robbery so passe. They wouldn't have anything there now. They'd, no. like, they'd be like, we haven't got any. Everything's online. We get seven hundred pounds. Like, yeah. what are we gonna do with this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, as we're taking down for armed robbery. <laughs> Didn't think it through. Anyway, crack on. Crack on. Um, later that evening, we see them uh, dra- actually dragging up these. Um, well, we don't see what it is initially, uh, but something from the creek, um, and basically it's a collection of bones. Yeah, like a massive like net bag full of them. Yeah, yeah, you can you can definitely tell there's a lot of bodies in this basically. And then we see uh, Scully uh, sorting through these bones in this room. Um, they're basically all laid out, and she says that they've. Um, well, Mulder enters and he says that they're still pulling bones from the river. And she says so far they've um, basically been able to identify 11 different bodies from this collection. And one of them being George. Um, she says the others 
could be about 20, the, the bones could have been there for 20 to 30 years. Um, Scully says that they do have one strange detail, Mulder. Joker that he is says that they've all lost their heads. Yeah, it, it is strange. I mean, yeah, that's that's true about what actually happens later on. We'll yeah, 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 yeah. At first, I thought it was a weird, weird joke, but yeah. No, he's saying it because there's no skulls. True, true. There's only like the bones. There's no skulls available. But she says, other than that, mm. um, all of the bones uh, have signs of smoothing on the end yeah. on the joints. I didn't get this as well. I, again, I'm worried. I just missed things so, now. Is, uh, was there a reason for this? Mulder, uh, Mulder says later on that it's um, um, smoothing of the bones is evidence that they've been boiled in a pot, basically, so they've been cooked. Oh. I feel like I'm revealing this. I, this is this episode. I'm literally reliving this episode now. I've missed so much. I apologise. This is really unprofessional of me. <laughs> I did watch the episode. I've just missed all this. Because <laughs> he says, doesn't he say that, like, there was they talk about like the current and the current wouldn't have done this because it yeah, would have yeah, smoothed basically. the whole bone if, if, if that was the case. That's, that's what they yeah they said it's isolated to just see like I was ta- I was paying attention I did yeah. little I did watch it. Yeah. How did I miss that though? <laughs> so it boils basically yeah it's evidence of boiling, um, and he actually does say I don't know if it's this part or later on. Um, I think it's this part actually that he mentions um, that there's also it's also been known. Um, and this is the tie to the next episode, I think, or this is at least a mention of whatever next episode is, because he says that this um, they've known cannibal tribes from the Ana- Anasazi um, tribe in New Mexico. He says okay. used to used to boil bones and stuff, and that that had the same evidence. And next week's episode is called Ana- Anasazi. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. I don't know if it's related or if this is just like a little Easter egg. To yeah, see possibly. So we'll see. Um, we see Doris. Uh, coming down a hall uh, as uh, the sheriff's getting some coffee, and he explains to her that they they found George as she's asking if if they have, yeah. and she just starts crying and, and runs away. Um, we're then at the chicken plant, and we see uh, Jess take this um, clipboard from a worker, and we we notice that Doctor Vance is watching on. Um, um, Jess basically follows him outside and goes to speak to him. I I, I did like just a. To- Interrupt and prove that I watched the episode. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've got to validate it now. <laughs> yeah. The um, the worker that was giving the clipboard to Jess, did you, I love the stock lines that she gave. It was it was very much a lot of nodding the head enthusiastically mm. and going, mm-hmm, yes. yes, and it was just a lot of that. And every time you cut back to her, it was the same thing. It was like, mm mm-hmm, yes. <laughs> That was the part where she's like, I'm going to be on X-Files tonight. Yeah, watch, yeah, exactly. Watch. watch. They gave me 20 lines of dialogue. Yeah. And then a family like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Is like that they, it? Like they're Gavin and Stacey. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I can imagine. Um, anyway, uh, Vance is explaining that they found um, these bones in the river. And he says that uh, another person now has the, uh, the same symptoms that uh, um, Paula and uh, George had. And Jess says that uh, someone needs to tell Mr. Chaco about it, but the doctor says that he knows already, but he just isn't doing anything about it. So Jess says he'll go and speak to him. So they, I think this is the first sort of sign that there's everyone's connected yeah, in this. Yeah, especially the, especially like um, I didn't really suspect the um, Jess. Mm. Um, I, I, the doctor was a little bit suspicious. Yeah. Su- suspicious right from the start. But um, yeah, Jess. So sort of, he, to be fair, he seemed above board most yeah, of the yeah. time. Like he. He knew what he was on about. He was just a, a boss. Yeah, basically. But yeah, he's definitely involved. Um, we then cut back to Mulder in this uh, in the room with his bones. Um, I like that Scully enters in this with a big bucket of like KFC chicken. Yeah, like, for no other reason than a gag at yeah. the end. Like, let's yeah. be honest. What well, she was never go- so stupid. Isn't it? I, also, I, I just thought knowing all of this that's going on, I just I, I don't know. I have a salad. It's yeah, like anything but chicken. And right she now. had to stand there like an idiot with her under her arm for the entire scene. Yeah. Oh. Um. So Mulder says that um, uh, he's done a check, and apparently eighty-seven people have disappeared in the last fifty years in or around Dudley. Mm. Um. And he thinks that the, the same person is, is responsible for all of this, basically. Um, Scully thinks that maybe it's a cult. Uh, Mulder suspects that the people of Dudley have been eating more than just chicken. Again, good hunch. Like yeah, he, he's yeah. He's guessed it straight away. 
Um, oh, it's this part where he mentions, he says that the smooth bones yeah, is evidence of boiling in a pot. Um, and yeah, uh, <laughs> Scully sort of looks at her, a bucket of chicken at this point. Um, she thinks that Paula um, could have gotten this disease by eating George, basically. Um, and Mulder thinks that maybe this is why they look so young, or this is why she looks so young. Um, apparently there's evidence that eating the flesh of, of or cannibalism like can lead to you not aging as yeah. quickly. A big leap, to be honest. I've yeah. never heard of this. And but. even Mulder does say at the time, um, so he basically says it's been tracked back for so many years that there's a lot of different um, parts of history saying the same thing. Mm. I don't know the science of it, but it's... It, it can't be false. And it was a little bit of a get out. Yeah. Because it was just like, I don't, I don't know the science, but it works. Yeah, uh, okay, basically. fair enough. Yeah. Um, See, I did watch the episode. Watch I, pro- I, d- I promise you, I did watch it. <laughs> we did a quiz at the end there. Um, and he, he mentions that they, they should go and check the age records of the, the rest of the people mm. in Italy just to see how many people might be involved. But again, how would you prove that in the court law? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know I mean? um, we see at the Chaco residence... Um, Jess uh, is with Mr. Chaco and Jess says that people are getting scared and Chaco just says that people are losing their faith and he says um, he can handle all of this. Very, again, very charismatic the way he handles it at yeah, this point. Yeah. Um, Doris arrives um, and uh, says that she just can't do this anymore. She can't keep lying. And Chaco says that he um, that she didn't do anything wrong um, uh, but she says she helped in all of this. Yeah. Um, he says that this town wasn't built in a day and it definitely won't fall apart in a day um, when she's talking about these FBI investigations where she thinks that this is going to be the downfall of them and he says that they'll that he'll take care of it so she leaves and uh, Chaco says that uh, she's one of us part of our town yeah so there we go I love I love that now every Every episode we get somebody literally saying You it. love that, that oh. you know, when someone says the oh, title. Yeah, it's bright. <laughs> there's, there's, a fa- there's a family guy joke um, where I think Peter's in a cinema and um, like he's watching a film. I can't even remember the name of the film in it. And it's like, um, but they, they say the actual name of the film. Like, I'm trying to, I cannot think of an example, but basically, yeah. they, and he just goes, ah, that, that, I feel like I'm like, that's like me yeah. every time I watch yeah, it. Yeah. You do, you do it a lot. Yeah, I do. I do it out loud, to be fair, when I watch you, it. I, talking about, um, I mean, I think we mentioned last, oh, last week, maybe, or might have mm. been the beginning of this episode. Um, we're going to see Avengers. Mm. I watched Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. Um, last weekend. Um, cause I thought, you know, get up to speed and get ready for it and whatnot. And um, there's a part in that where I think it's Doctor Strange yeah, turns around and says, gonna say. we're in the end game now. And obviously I know it's now called end game. I'm like, I went, hey! <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's good fun. <laughs> it's, it's good, man. When, when they actually say, you like, he said the thing. This is plan all along. <laughs> uh, as, as they leave, Jess thinks that something must be done about her, basically. Um, and Chaco says that they can't turn on themselves now. Um, he says that they, they need to just worry about the FBI. Yeah. Uh, we're then at the uh, Seth County Courthouse, uh, and it's at night, and Mulder and Scully break in, uh, or pick the lock, basically, of this um, office, going with uh, flashlights, and we see all of the file cabinets are burnt. Yeah. Um, M- Scully basically uh, mentions that this is a recent thing mm. or this fire's recent and then we see somebody appear outside the door well, like a shadow be, before that Mulder does mention that it don't it's not that he doesn't think it's coincidence that it's only the births to yes yeah. that have been burnt yeah yeah um but yeah we see somebody appear behind the door and Mulder at this point gets a call from Doris um she says that she needs to speak to him she's scared for her life and she thinks that Mr. Chaco is going to kill her um Mulder tells her to lock up and, and wait for Scully uh, and he says he's going to take uh, Chaco into custody. We see Doris locking up, uh, and then the lights go out in her house. Uh, she starts to cry again, and then we see this man in the mask um, sort of waiting. And he enters, uh, and then we hear a scream as it fades to black. So we assume yeah, the she's worst. gone. Yeah. Um, Scully then drives up to uh, Doris's house. 
Goes to the door and rings the bell, but there's no response. She goes around the back and finds that the house is empty. And the door slams behind her as she's looking around. Um, we then cut to the Chaco residence and see Maud is there ringing the doorbell. Um, the housemaid says she'll go and fi- find him. And Mulder notices that there's a shelf um, with all these artifacts from a, a, a New Guinea tribe. I think I think they're, they're from or like the part of the world. Yeah. Like. Um, and we, we see these pictures of Chaco with this like tribe. And he looks exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. As he does now. Yeah, because I think it... I didn't even pick up on that, but it sort of says that it was 1940-something. Yeah, it? yeah, it was a while ago. It was yeah. before we started this chicken plant. Yeah. And he, he as I say, it looks exactly the same. So. Yeah. Um, he then noticed this, like, red sort of cabinet. Um, and he asked the maid if what's in here. She doesn't know. And he says, can you open it? And she says she doesn't have a key or anything like that. Doesn't stop Mulder. No, he just picks up this heavy ornament and smashes the lock. What if he's wrong? And this, this is like an a, an ain't because it, it was like an antique it cabinet. Looked an antique, yeah. It could be priceless. And he's just, well, I know something about destroying priceless <laughs> you know, ornaments. But yeah, so he finds severed heads. Basically, yeah. So in there. if you if you if you're fond of collecting severed heads, don't keep them in the hallway. Yeah. Basement, surely a better place. Yeah, or bedroom where you can lock the door. You know where you're gonna be. That's like very governor esque from Walking Dead, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a very good point. Yeah. Just, just don't keep them in the hallway. That's what a ridiculous place yeah. to keep them in a pantry. Make it mix up. Then again, it won't matter too much. For them, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If they fancy a little midnight snack, yeah. head down to the pantry, <laughs> nibble on here. Yeah. Do you reckon they keep they they kept the entire head or? Do you reckon they thought, yeah, pig's ears, some people eat those, mm. and have a human ear? I don't know. So. Uh, what I'm more wondering is, if you decide to become a cannibal... Yeah. It's a hell of a lifestyle choice you make. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know what, to this week... Do you, is there different ways to cook human meat? Like, would you roast someone week, then boil it the next, maybe barbecue... I imagine, Pickled. I imagine there is literally every type of way. Uh, like, uh, which, but what I mean is, like, you think of cannibals and you think of like just someone like crouched over a human body just eating raw flesh. That's what you assume, don't you? Yeah? Usually, when you think of cannibalism, it's desperation. Yeah, exactly. Know, that's, that's that's the vision that comes yeah. into my head. But like, do you? Like, obviously, they've got a huge plant where they can do whatever they need to. Do you think that like, they cut like it's just packets of bacon? But it's just human. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I guess, sausages. I guess and... if it's a spiritual thing, or the way if you, if you see this as just like eating a steak, then I guess yeah, you think hmm, just... I'll have I'll have my human well done. Well, today. yeah. Just, yeah. What I'm thinking though is, do you think like they is it just about eating it, or like do they like take off fat and make scratchings out of it? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like I there's, there's, a, there's a pub snack behind the bar <laughs> where it's just like, yeah. do you want some scratchings? That's a very... and then they're, they're like. Oh, the pork scratchings. Wink, wink. Yeah, yeah, of course. You can have a pack of that. You've literally described a scene that I saw from a horror film the once where it was like, it was set in like this country <laughs> bonking town in England. And like they walk in the pub, like it's like these college kids. Yeah. And like everybody in the pub staring at them and they all look a bit weird. And then they have like a pork scratch. He has, bites some scratchings. He bites them in. He goes, this tastes a bit weird. And lo and behold, it's because it's... See? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's... I, I do wonder... I don't know. Maybe I guess. Yeah, everyone likes cooking different stuff, don't they? So yeah. I suppose if you're into human flesh, then. Sometimes... But then you have to start to wonder: Does someone get better at it? Is it like a gourmet human chef? Do you reckon um, Gordon Ramsay could cook up a good human steak? What would be the best? Are the skills transfer? What do you reckon be the best cut of a? Human... Um, this is really fucking <laughs> boring. But the breast. Breast tends to be the best cut in any I animal. Rump was good. Uh, Plus, that's like the biggest muscle on a human, isn't it? Their ass. I don't know. Is it? I thought so. Yeah. You sit on it. So. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> you haven't got these guns. <laughs> <laughs> a very visual joke for the podcast. There, <laughs> yeah, you can imagine what just happened there. Um, <laughs> yeah, just for everyone there. I, I pose with my weedy arms. <laughs> yeah. I always think this, that like, um, they always say like, with humans, we're quite bony, and we like, apparently when the shark bites you, it doesn't, it realises that you're not very good food because you're quite bony. Yeah. If you're a cannibal, that's supposed to be crap. Like, but, cause, but, 
maybe they're not doing it for taste, maybe they're doing it for eternal life. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. it's a nice side effect to have. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. The only time I'd ever consider it is if we went, like... Well, hang about. Don't don't start this, because you've already decided you will eat my legs quite quickly. No, it's that's just... what I was going to say. If we was flying over Belgium, yeah. and we got lost in the ghettos, yeah. then I'd consider eating your legs. Okay. Just yours, though. Just mine. I like how, like, I don't know... What if, like, other people had crashed with us? Just well, don't go for me. If we crash... I'm quite short. They're not going to fill you up for long. If we crashed, say we crashed and everyone survived, yeah. and we hadn't had our dip, uh, in, in, in-flight in meal, so there's yeah. still, like, 200 ready meals, I'd give it about four hours before I ate your legs. <laughs> I, I do wonder, like, I, I I would hope that at this point people have understood our, our humour and what we're, we're yeah, like. Mate, I, if, I, if you've never heard of us before, you're like, Jesus Christ, what, what is he talking about? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, anyway. we Yeah, as you mentioned, we find a cabinet of... <laughs> Sorry to interrupt once more. Do you know what I find great? Is when we started this podcast... I was always very careful about like what I joked about and stuff like that. Because I wanted it to be inclusive and make sure that everyone enjoyed it. And now, I just say what makes me laugh. And I just I don't know whether everyone else finds it as funny as I we do. We need another poll. Like, we, 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 we've asked whether you want more or less the show. Do you want these jokes? Are these too far? Is, is this making you feel uncomfortable? Because yeah. I talk about eating you far more than I should. No, yeah, this, it's kind of worrying to be honest. Like, I don't know if I should stay around. It's been at least four episodes <laughs> over the course of like eight I like weeks. This, this is before we even got to the episode about cannibals. <laughs> it started long before. <laughs> Unprompted. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Anyway. Oh god, carry on. Um, as you mentioned, yeah, we find this cabinet full of severed heads. All the eyes and mouths are, are sewn up. Um. We then see uh, Mulder call Scully and explain that uh, Chaco has gone missing. Um, and she also says that Doris has gone missing as well. She says that the power has been cut. And then we see um, Chaco actually hiding in the dark in, in Doris's mm. house. Um, we hear a clatter on the phone and we cut back to see um, Scully, who's now knocked out, bleeding from her yeah. head. Um, it's now night. Uh, we're in the middle of a field and we see all these the townspeople around this bonfire. You realise the scale is everyone mm. in this town's involved. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and they're, they're getting this soup from a pot, which now we know what's probably in that pot. Well, they say as much, don't they? Yeah, pretty so. much. Um, Chaco uh, walks up with Scully uh, tied up, and she's got uh, tape over her mouth as well. Um, and Chaco says that they they shouldn't have touched Doris because she was one of them. Uh, and he says they only had to deal with the outsiders. And he says that they've turned into an abomination of what they were. Um, Which, coming from a cannibal, <laughs> yeah. is high praise. <laughs> Do you know, it's weird because I, I get the feeling he sees this as some kind of spiritual thing. You know, yeah, right? he like, does. And maybe like a greater good yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, he definitely does. Yeah. Um, and again, you get the feeling it's because of this tribe that he spent time with. Yeah, that's yeah. what he's learned it from. Yeah, because you do hear about that, like, um, uh, like cannibal tribes tend to attack other cannibal tribes and eat, yeah. eat them, not their own tribes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I guess it's even cannibals have got their taboos. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Um, Jess says that um, it was his fault that he brought in this outsider that's made them all sick, meaning George, um, and he says. Um, once you've turned on your on yourself, it's it's all over. Um, and Jess says that it's not his problem anymore. And then we see this masked man appear, and he grab and they grab Chaco. Um, Scully watches as uh, Chaco's taken and he's strapped into this sort of like device, like a stockade, I guess, or something like a metal. Yeah, one. it's not very effective. Like it just it just sort of flips over on the head, but anyone can get out. Um, it's on the forehead. Like the, I thought they got it on the neck. Not for Scully, they didn't. I don't know what oh. about the other guy, but Scully, it was just over her forehead. Like she could literally just hmm. n- crawl I... backwards, and it was, she'd been out. Maybe yeah. you should pay more attention to this episode, <laughs> Luke. Don't start. <laughs> um, we then hear them 
basically decapitate yeah. Jacob. Yeah. Um, we see Mulder driving towards where this, uh, I liked, this is um, happening. Sorry to interrupt, but I like Julian Anderson's acting here. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. had to act just with her eyes, and mm. she showed like this horror, horrified face. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, I think she's quite expressive in yeah, uh, she without is, yeah. needing to, to speak. Um, they bring Scully over now, uh, and she's strapped in, and we see the axe go up. We then see uh, Mulder's car pull up now, and Mulder runs towards the bo- uh, the bonfire. We cut back to the axeman as he's still got his axe raised, and then we hear a gunshot, and we see that the axeman falls down. The crowd scatters, and then we see uh, Jess aiming his gun at Mulder, but he's knocked down as all these this crowd is scattering, and they start trampling him. Yeah. Um, Mulder unlocks Scully and asks if she's been hurt. Uh, they get up and unmask the axeman. And it's the doctor from earlier. Um, what was his Vance Rudolph? I think his name was. I thought it was the cop. The cop. I thought it was the doctor. I'm gonna go with you. I thought it was the cop. I'm pretty sure it's the doctor. Yeah, because that's why that he makes a lot more sense too. than the cop. I didn't know. That was one of the things I was going to ask because I was like, I thought the cop didn't know because he, he uncovered all those bones. The doctor makes so much more sense. Should have paid more attention. <laughs> For God's sake, what have I done? This episode, I've, I've, I've messed this episode up. I apologize. <laughs> That um, makes so much more sense. Yeah, of course it was the doctor. Of course it was. I'm not even myself. <laughs> we then see. Didn't the, didn't the cop have a mustache? Uh, yeah. For God's sake! <laughs> For God's sake, I, Dan. I don't, know, I don't know if he had a mustache. I just said it now. <laughs> just <to laughs> went. <you. laughs> oh, I'm so annoyed with myself. <laughs> we then see this. Uh, we see the scene there of uh, the field empty and all the leaders are dead or or down basically. Um, the next day, we're at the chicken plant, and it seems like business as usual until all these police turn up and start putting all this crime tape up and telling everyone to leave their stations. They hate. And we hear uh, a voiceover of Scully basically saying that the Chaco processing plant has been closed down. Um, there's no evidence of contaminated chickens uh, so far. Um, there remains unknown how many citizens participated in the ritual activity. 27 have become fatally ill. With the Kreutzfeld Jacobs disease, um, uh, we find out that a, a transport plane had basically been sh- shot down in 1944 over New Guinea, and Chaco was on the plane, uh, and he was the only survivor. Uh, he spent six months with the uh, is it Joel or Jole? I the, don't know. J O L E. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce um, it. Who is a, a, basically a tribe who have cannibal practices. Um, the records show that uh, Chaco was born in 1902, which would have made him 93 years old. Um, and they say that his remains have not been found. And this is where we see a worker who's basically feeding the chicken, uh, this bucket of stuff to the chickens, find grey hair yeah. in the feed. Um, and the chickens eat it all up. So that's the end of the story, I suppose. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, what did you think? <laughs> I don't know, because I don't know whether I watched it or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was a little... I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought it was, a, again, much like the last episode, I thought it was a little bit convoluted at the beginning. Went down a lot of different tracks that didn't really need to. Um, I enjoyed the story. I thought it was yeah. I thought it was interesting. Um, I love the idea, the, the irony, that all these cannibals that are... are eating people to extend their lives and it ends up being the cannibal cannibalizing that ends up killing them as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> like I quite I kinda like that poetic justice yeah, type of thing. Yeah. Um but yeah it, it just sort of ends abruptly as well. Like yeah, it just seems yeah. to go down all these many paths and then doesn't really resolve any of them. Like the guy in the mask. I didn't really understand why he was in a mask. I think again it's more just a ritualistic thing from yeah. that tribe. But I don't know. But then again I I, I, I was Concerned why the cop was involved, and now he's not. So <laughs> honestly, I I need a few more days to think about what what, what I thought of the episode. What, what did you think? Um, <laughs> As someone who watched it intently, <laughs> I thought it was okay. It was like a this like an interesting sort of cannibal story because I really didn't see where it was going. I didn't realize how big of this this conspiracy it was until it was sort of revealed. Yeah, I had a feeling it was a cannibal story as soon as they started talking about um, this disease passing down I thought oh it's probably like a mad cow kind of disease but um um 
yeah, I thought it was okay. Um, nothing. To, it wasn't amazing, um, but it was a it was a solid episode. I'd say. Um, I, I thought. Um, I thought it was better than last week's. If I say over the last two yeah. we watched, yeah. Uh, and we've got we've got next week's coach of the season finale, and we know that's going to be big. So yeah, yeah, we're really looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. And now it's time for. Luke's production notes. The episode was Spots in its first standalone episode for the show, and because of that, he decided to write about the most despicable and vile things he could imagine, which in this case was cannibalism occurring at a chicken processing plant. As specifically at a chicken processing plant? Um, apparently, yeah. That's that's the vilest thing, yeah. Spotsnitz was also inspired by the thriller Bad Day at Black Rock, uh, 1955, uh, about a town that holds a horrible secret, and an article he read while a student at the University of California, Los Angeles, about salamander cannibalism and how such behaviour behavior makes the animals sick. Mm, interesting. I think that, yeah, like I said, it's, I think it's not just a taboo thing anyway with cannibalism. I think there is a health reason. As to why you shouldn't do it, because yeah. diseases can pass from your genes, I guess. Or from yeah, it makes genes. sense. Yeah, but that's like the same with AIDS, though, isn't it? Because like uh, there was like chimpanzees had AIDS or something like, that, and it can pass from chimpanzees to to humans because they're so genetically. Similar. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like that, yeah. So it, the, I think it's just. But does that mean like so? If a chicken's disease, you can't get that disease because. Okay. You're not genetically compatible. I think basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, that makes sense. There's, there's like diseases that like, um, what is it? Is there, there's one called like Viles disease or Viles disease or something like that, that like rats carry, but they don't, it doesn't affect them because it does, it can't do anything to them. Yeah. But if you get bitten by a rat, it passes on to a, to you yeah, that makes it sense. Affects you. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's weird stuff like that. Mm, yeah, interesting. But, um, when the episode was being scripted, uh, these ideas were later supplemented with the medical research about Kuru, a very rare, incurable neurodegenerative disorder that was formerly common among the Foray people of Papua New Guinea. Mm. Well, wow, interesting. Um, a lot of outsized of knowledge in, in, in mm, this production. Though, to like it, it. Tend, yeah, they've, they've definitely done their research. Their, their research. Um, while researching the ancestral Pueblo... Oh, God, me... Puebloians, I think, yeah. for the second season finale. So, ooh, bit of, bit of a hint into what's to come. So, are we going to have cannibals in the season finale? I think. Who knows? Spotsnitz learned that archaeologists had discovered boiled human bones in Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, an element featured in the final version of the episode. Oh, Chaco Canyon as well. Yeah, the next note is <laughs> doesn't take a genius. Spotness also used Chaco as the name of the chicken plant. <laughs> so, I wonder where that came from. Um, Spotness had trouble finding books about cannibalism. <laughs> hard, hard one to say at the library. <laughs> uh, but he did glean enough information to name the ca- the characters in the episode after real notable car- uh, cannibals. Okay. So, yeah. What was that German cannibal's name? I have. Oh, I know which one you're on about. Yeah, I the, can't remember. The one who's like. Put an adult in the paper, and then somebody replied and was like, "Yeah, let's go for it." I read an article in 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 the paper the other day about him because we was um, me and Jem was watching. Um, what is your fascination with cannibalism? <laughs> <laughs> you get it's, worried it's now, aren't you? <laughs> um, no, I was. Um, hang on, what? They made a film of, of that, didn't they? All of them yeah, a lot three. of it's been banned in Germany. Yeah. Armin Muse, his name is yeah. right. Um, so basically, the the origin of the story is. Um, I we was watching me and Jem was watching a lot of Ramstein videos, mm. and in one of the videos of one of the songs, um, they directly reference this killer. Yeah. So basically, for those who don't know, his um his name's Armin Muse, and basically he put an adult into the paper saying we want I, I want to cook somebody, I want someone to respond, come over, I will kill you. And I'll cook you and I'll eat you. And people actually responded to this. And this one guy responded. And he actually partook in the eating of himself mm. before being killed. I do apologise. This is a bit gory. Um, but 
um, I was reading a bit about him because I was like, saw this song. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm quite interested. I want to know like what. Mm. It's not like Ramstein to do some controversial. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and there was one line that really caught my attention in the in the in the Wikipedia article, which is um, I thought was quite funny. I'll read it out to you. Um, so he wanted they go on to say he wanted to write a book because he, he he really regretted his actions and he wanted to write a biography to put people off trying the same thing as he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he goes on to say. Websites dedicated to Muse have appeared with people advertising for willing victims. They should go for treatment so it doesn't escalate like it did with me, said Muse. While in prison, Muse has since become a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a 180 on that. <laughs> I guess, maybe... <laughs> I feel like we've got really dark in this episode, but might as well just steer into the skid. Yeah. What if, like, once you've eaten human... You just think, well, there's nowhere else to go, you know what I mean, apart yeah. from this. Like, I've plateaued in my meat eating. Yeah. My yeah. eating human. So, I give it up. Just give up meat. And, and on a high. There's never going to be anything as good as that human meat, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. just I'll have a salad instead. <laughs> <laughs> right, should, uh, we get, we, should we get two emails, Luke? I've still not finished. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> um, Gary Grubbs, the actor who played the sheriff, was later cast as the fire captain in the 1998 X-Files film. Oh, okay. So we'll see Gary Grubbs again. I wonder if he'll be as incompetent as the fire captain. I hope not. (laughs) Howard Gordon came up with the idea to start the episode with a love affair between George Kearns and Paula Gray. Mm. Of the end result, Spotsnitz said, I was very pleased with the way it was executed and I think it was a good mystery. He later wrote that he liked it more as time had gone on. Um... Director Rob Bowman admitted to being exhausted both physically and mentally by the time of this episode. Uh, The second to last of the season was produced. Um, This lack of interest later resulted in the episode taking extra time to finish. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the last one, Rob uh, Rob Bowman later recalled that the most difficult scene to film was the episode's climax, if only because of the ceremonial mask featured. He explained, The mask scared the hell out of me, only because I thought, boy... If I don't shoot this right, it's going to be silly. I can see that. Yeah, you have to shoot it right. Yeah, I think they did. I think it. Yeah. I didn't. I don't think it looked goofy at all. I thought it looked quite menacing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so um, that is the end of my oh, prediction. Notes. Fair enough. Well, we've got a few correspondents this week. I'll just read out a few of them. Um, we had um on our little mini episodes, um, so our character bios, um. Um, Ray got in touch and she she mentioned um, on our podcast app on our Podbean account that um, she really loves the reactions to the characterizations of Mulder and Scully in particular um, and she said that we should both do these mini episodes again after a couple more seasons mm. which I think is quite a good idea actually like it's good to just sometimes it's good to step away from the actual episodes and the plots and the stories yeah. and just take a good look at the characters and yeah. see where they've come because it's sometimes you you forget about the little details. Especially when you're talking about something where, like, in this episode where there's not too much, like, character development. We're yeah. just talking about the plot. It's a plot. Suppose, yeah. So, yeah, I, I I would definitely be up for doing this mm. again. I, I really enjoyed doing those little episodes. Yeah. Um, and we also had an email from Sophie Brady. Mm-hmm. Um, this actually, this email made me laugh, actually. Um, I, I'll explain why. So, she put, I love the X-Files and I really enjoy listening to your podcast. Thank you very much, Sophie. Um... Just heard your episode on Skinner and thought it was great. He's such a cool character on the show and he rarely gets the praise he deserves. So it's nice to hear that you guys dig him too. I actually wrote a post on my own X-Files fan site a while ago detailing all the time Skinner kicked ass on the show. I look forward to hearing more episodes from you guys in the future. Thanks, Sophie. And she actually included that um, the blog. Um, and I had a look um, at... I didn't have a look until we recorded, but we'd already got another email from him at that, at that point. And she put, just realised that the blog link that I sent you will totally have spoilers from later seasons of the <laughs> X-Files, so you might want to avoid checking that out. So, what we're going to do is, um, I think we should put the um, blog, because I, I, it does look interesting, and I've yeah. loved, I love Skinner being a badass, yeah, uh, so yeah. we're the same as you, Sophie. Um, 
Skinner's such a cool character. Mm. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that blog. So what we're going to do is, if we put it into the bio of the episode... I was going to say that. Should we put it in that and tweet it out as yeah, well? Yeah, we'll tweet it out. And, and if anyone else wants to have a look at it, um, go go for it and, and, and check out Sophie's Be blog. Be aware. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> and Sophie, I'm sure your blog's great. I'm just going to avoid it for now for myself because I don't want to spoil it for me. Yeah. But I'll definitely try and get back to it once we've watched a bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, thank you for getting in touch. Um, yeah, so that's it for this episode, really. Uh, next episode is uh, the season finale. Of, uh, really looking forward to that. Of season two. Anasazi. Again, we've seen this um, pop up earlier on in this episode where they mention this, this Anasazi tribe. So maybe there's a link back to this episode. Or maybe, again, like you said, maybe it's just a little, a little red. Yeah. So, um, Do you have a way of saying goodbye this week? Not for last week's antics. I'm sorry. I just was put on the spot and I didn't want to stall and pretend. Well, there's consequences to your actions, Luke. Well, I'm going to say Topher <laughs> to you. What's, what's Topher? Topher is Samoan for goodbye. Oh, okay. Well, you've redeemed yourself a little bit. I might have one next time. Okay, okay. Well, I made up for it. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. So, just have to say Topher to you. Topher. tells her to lock up and, and wait for Scully uh, and he says he's going to take uh, Chaco into, cust- uh, into custody um, did you say into custard <laughs> <laughs> just don't know <laughs> need a drink uh, into custard <laughs> I'm going to take you into custard uh, big old ball 